If you're like me, you love Doctor Who in all of its permutations. Well, most of its permutations. Yeah, that's the viewership. And if you're like me, this is where you bailed on the Doctor. But the latest three episodes, Boom, 73 Yards, and Dot and Bubble, prove Doctor Who is back in a big way. My son got my wife and I hooked on Doctor Who. It was an obsession for him, and my wife and I were both happy to go along for the ride. We went to London and had to find one of the few police call boxes left standing. And then we visited the Doctor Who Museum, the Who Shop, which was really awesome. Even though it was really out of the way. It would have been nice to have a TARDIS to get there, but we took a black cab instead. My son wanted to rewatch every episode over and over, and my wife and I were thrilled to oblige. You could say we were quite the Who household. Every new Doctor is an adjustment. It took a little while to get into the Capaldi era, but it paid off in a big way. So we gave Jodie Whittaker's run a chance, but my son bailed pretty quickly. My wife and I attribute it to, well, he's not 11 anymore. Maybe he's aged out. But we wanted to keep watching. We tried, but the show just didn't hold our attention anymore, and it, no, it wasn't because it was a woman doctor or because the show went woke. Doctor Who always had a social conscience. It was just that this broke the golden rule. Don't be boring. I used to write for the show Bill Nye the Science Guy, and Bill would say, we're an educational show, but we're also an entertainment show. But we have to entertain first, because if you don't entertain people, nobody will watch, and then you won't educate anybody. The Chibnall era fell short, in my opinion, because they succumbed to something called author tract. That's when the storytellers care more about the ideology they want to push, rather than the story that they need to tell. I don't think anybody watching Doctor Who in 2018 was for racism or sexism, but the show seemed so heavy-handed. Someone on a Reddit comment section even said it felt like they were watching Dora the Explorer and half expected the doctor to turn to the camera and say, sexism, stop sexing. The return of Russell T. Davies sees the show deal with important issues very effectively because they let the audience think for themselves. They don't bash them over the head with things. Uh, the legendary screenwriter Billy Wilder once said, let the audience add two plus two and they'll love you forever. Well, I'm gonna love Russell T. Davies and Stephen Moffat forever because they let me add two plus two for a long time and it seems like I'm gonna love them for all the stuff they're doing right now. Oh, I'm gonna start spoiling things now, so if you're not caught up, stop watching me and start watching Doctor Who. Spoilers. I have to say I'm loving this season mostly because of the latest three episodes. But I like the introduction to Ruby. Having a mystery about her is great. It's a little like the crack in Amy Pond's wall or knowing something's up with Clara the Impossible Girl. I like it when the companion has a storyline, their own arc. And this feels very Stephen Moffat. And I think that's awesome because it's like Russell T. Davis learned from him, like the apprentice taught the master, which I think is really cool. The other interesting thing they have going on is Susan Twist. And yes, that's her name. She's the actress who keeps popping up as a different character. And you know it's gonna tie into Ruby's story somehow. I love it when the seasons have overarching stories rather than just monsters of the week. And you know this is gonna pay off, you just don't know how. It's kind of like when you heard silence will fall long before we ever knew what the silence was. Space Babies I thought was kind of meh. It didn't fill me with hope for the show's direction, to be honest. I was a little afraid it was gonna get disnified too much. The Devil's Court was better. I know it's getting mixed reviews online, but I liked the maestro. I thought she was a creative villain, and tying things to the toy maker just adds to the this season's gonna have an overarching storyline feel. But then, boom, kicked things up several notches. Now, seeing Stephen Moffat's in the credits gave me goosebumps, because to be honest, I didn't know he was coming back. And I love not just that he wrote this episode, but just knowing that he and Russell T. Davies are together bouncing ideas off each other really gives me hope for the show's future. 
This episode is a great premise, and it was a real acting challenge for Shudi, who really delivered. And the side characters are all fully formed, each had their own moments. We spend one episode with them, and they make us feel things, which is the entire purpose of any work of art. And the episode makes an anti-military industrial complex without bashing you over the head with it. That is how it should be done. Then the highlight of the season so far, 73 yards, and the best episode in years, I think. Like I said, I bailed on the Jodie Whittaker run, so if I miss something great, I apologize. This was a perfect Dr. Light episode and gave Millie Gibson a chance to shine. I liked her before this episode, but I loved her after. The episode flirts with horror movie territory, feeling a little lights out or it follows, but it's a wholly original premise. The idea of the fairy circle and all the mythology attached to it coming real is fantastic. And is it because of the toy maker? Well, we're gonna have to stay tuned and find out. Now, this episode is great as a standalone, but it also gives us a hint about where the series is going. This is a masterclass in writing that really serves the companion and gives her three dimensions. Seeing Ruby in the hospital when she's older talk about abandonment endears me to the character, even though this version of her will cease to be. It's still who she is. It nails the theme of abandonment and only makes me want to stick around longer to see how the mystery of who she is unfolds. Then Dot and Bubble which isn't as strong as 73 yards, but I don't think anything that followed it could have been. I love that this episode did a fake out, making you think it's gonna be just a statement about social media, but it becomes about so much more. We meet Lindy, she's vapid, she's trapped in her bubble. We've seen stuff like this before. Wally had people living their lives, focusing just on the screen in front of them, and Black Mirror had many episodes about this, so, we think it's going to be a commentary on social media and how the algorithm keeps us in our bubbles or how we miss real life when we're staring at pixels. Lindy is so unlikable. She calls everyone stupid, even though she can't walk without the arrows on her screen. We think she's going to have some kind of redemption, but this episode gives us a twist and yet another twist. First, her turning on Ricky September to save herself, I absolutely did not see coming. She went from vapid caricature about how older generations see young people, who for some reason still call them millennials, even though millennials are pushing 40 now, to full-blown evil narcissist. And then the ending. Now, this is a great moment for the doctor. He's the guy who just wants to save people, even if they prove to be awful people. When she refuses help, you think, is it because she's racist or is she elitist and classist? Or does she just not trust anybody outside of her bubble? But then you think back through the whole episode and you realize all of her friends on the screen were all white. And then you think about how quickly she blocked the doctor and then how she didn't recognize him when she came up again. You realize, yeah, this is racism. But the doctor still wants to help her, even though she's a vile, loathsome person. And this is another fantastic performance. Lindy and her friends refuse, choosing probable death. This is a powerful ending. And yet, it gets a message across after it's entertained you. And it does it by making you think, and more importantly, by making you feel something. So yeah, Doctor Who is back. Fantastic. Fantastic. Fantastic.